Hello. Our story begins inside of a Venator class Star Destroyer. The ship was speeding through hyperspace until Darth Maul was born. He was freed by Ahsoka and after dismantling a hallway and using it as a weapon, he went to the hyperdrive room and ripped down the pillars that powered the vessel. The Venator was subsequently ripped out of hyperspace and stalled out with the entire engine system crumbling. The bridge was set into chaos as they tried to maintain control over the vessel, which was failing. Rex and Ahsoka made their way to the hangar bay, shortly after Ahsoka helped Rex remove his inhibitor chip. Thanks to the ship having been on Mandalore, there was a load of shuttles sitting in the hangar bay for Rex and Ahsoka to board. The only thing that stood in their way was Maul, who was creating chaos, and of course, the clones. Arc Trooper Jesse, still controlled by Order 66, intended to kill the traitors of the Republic, as he and the clones prepared to trap Jedi Ahsoka Tano and the traitor Commander Rex. They had a chance for diplomacy, and when that fell through, a couple of astromechs dropped the floor out from under them. There were a number of clones remaining, but with the stun rounds and Ahsoka's lightsaber, it was easy to handle. With the hangar bay doors open, they could see the moon or the planet getting closer towards them. Ahsoka and Rex made a beeline for the closest shuttle. Out of another corridor, Maul came barreling out like a bat out of hell. He sped past Ahsoka who was busy deflecting the few remaining blaster shots. She felt no need to chase him due to the assortment of vessels in the hangar bay. Maul was the first one to escape and shortly after he did, Ahsoka, Rex, and the Astromex boarded another shuttle and lifted up and out of the crashing Venator. Though on the bright side because the ship was littered with shuttles and LAATs, all the clones who hadn't died already were able to make an escape from the Venator and survive their attempt at Order 66. Though by the time they got out of the ship, Maul and Ahsoka were gone. Ahsoka and Rex nestled into the cockpits of the Republic shuttle. Something came in. Ahsoka looked down and a hologram popped up. She couldn't believe her eyes. It was so surreal and unbelievable because it was Raid Shadow Legends. Ahsoka and Rex listened in. They never heard of it. If you like challenges or taking down the Dark Lord the Sith, this game is for you. Treason, then. There's an assortment of collectible champions, 15 awesome factions, 12 dungeons that are more dangerous than Vader's closet, what? alongside endless customization and millions of players to join up with. Ahsoka and Rex were left in shock. Even they couldn't believe the challenging nature of the Doom Tower alongside that of all the dungeons. PvP and gaming has never been as good as this. They were also left in shock by what they could do on Raid. Once you've downloaded Raid from either Android or Apple stores, you'll have the opportunity to collect Song Wukong, the free new champion. All you have to do is log in within 7 days of joining between August 22nd and October 23rd, and you'll have your hands on someone as mischievous as Hondo. I smell profit! So click the link down below and use my promo code JTSKIN to get a hold of the Stag Knight with a custom skin made by John Tron himself. This will last until October 7th for all new players. And for all new players to raid, don't forget about the starter pack that comes with $30 worth of supplies to make sure you're ready to get in on the action, or Hondo is gonna send an IG unit with the big bird to your house. Believe me, I've seen it happen. The two of them sat in hyperspace in silence. Everything about what they had just encountered was terrifying, not to mention the big bird. Ahsoka reflected on the moments that she felt Anakin's call out for help. Surely there was something going on with Anakin, but where or why? Ahsoka asked Rex if he knew anything about Anakin that could help. After all, Rex hadn't been away from Skywalker like Ahsoka had. He leaned back in the seat and thought for a moment. Was there? He searched through his mind and then remembered something. He remembered that Anakin gave him the security code to lock on the Padme's ship's transponder. Not that it would be of any help, but maybe it would lead to Anakin. Of course, Ahsoka knew they were good friends, and yet she even hadn't pieced together that there was a real relationship sitting there between the two of them. Since they were in hyperspace, they couldn't reroute. Not like it would make much of a difference anyways. Padme's ship was also in hyperspace. Ahsoka and Rex watched the transponder and saw it arrive in the Mustafar system. What a weird place to go. The last time Ahsoka was on Mustafar was when the Sith had captured the Children of the Force through Cad Bane. The entire facility was destroyed before they left, so there couldn't be anywhere for them to land, could there? They'd have to wait it out until they arrived on Mustafar to find out. So Ahsoka and Rex sat in silence. What could they say? There was so much terror all over the galaxy and Ahsoka could feel it. When Order 66 first happened, she felt Anakin's pain on Coruscant, but now she could feel so much more. She was quietly mourning the loss of Plo Koon and what was likely to be Obi-Wan Kenobi too. What Ahsoka hadn't realized is that Anakin turned to the dark side and Obi-Wan had survived. The terror from all the younglings created an abyss in the Force. The younglings were slaughtered, as well as the Padawans. Most of the survivors of the Purge were kids, and they were mostly younger than Ahsoka, which made the pain of it so much worse. Rex didn't say anything. He was thinking about how terrible the other clones must have felt. He couldn't feel through the Force, but he could understand the fear that his brothers must have felt when they lost control. Their bodies were active, but no one was home. They were prisoners in their own bodies, and they watched themselves kill their friends. 
Without knowledge on anything or anyone, Rex could only assume the worst for his brothers and some of the Jedi he worked with, imagining Wolf killing Plo, or at least attempting to. If Wolf succeeded, Rex knew he would feel terrible about it. After all, it was Plo Koon who saved him and two other men from the malevolence at the beginning of the war. And on the other hand, there was Cody. What would go through his mind once Kenobi was attacked? The two of them were brothers. They were almost as close to brothers as the clones were to each other. Rex's mind drifted to Anakin, still having no clue about what Ahsoka heard through the Force. He imagined Commander Appo attempting to kill Skywalker. It was the worst situation to be in, and there was no one to confide in. Without anyone they could reach out to, aside from Padme, they had to stay with each other for the time being. Ahsoka and Rex, after jumping towards Mustafar, would continue to stay silent. There would be a few short conversations, both of them asking the other if they were alright or if they thought someone survived, but that was about it. If it was Rex asking, he was given an answer of what Ahsoka thought she was picking up on through the Force, while Rex was giving her answers to what he thought happened to his brothers. It was a bit difficult to talk about, but what else was there to say? They were both thankful that they had each other. Without the other, it would be much more difficult to just escape. They collectively hoped that the clones inside of the Venator escaped as well. Before arriving, they theorized about what Maul could do. The conversations were really stale, but it's not like they could be anything more than that at this point. When they arrived at the planet, they didn't bother to check the transponder code, because they knew that the ship had landed on Mustafar. When they pulled their ship down, Ahsoka felt her heart shatter. She couldn't understand why. There was so much pain and suffering, and it felt like her brother. Why was she picking up on Anakin being here? That wouldn't make any sense. She closed her eyes and put her hand on the ship's controls and said the same thing that she did when removing the inhibitor chip from Rex, chanting the saying over and over again, I'm one with the Force and the Force is with me. Ahsoka pulled the ship over a massive lava river and Rex pointed out of the window and said that there was someone down there on the ground. Ahsoka's eyes shot open and she could see that her master was laying on the ground. She pulled the ship down and landed on top of the riverbed. She lunged out of the ship, her robes floating behind her as she descended the riverbed, slipping on the pebbles under her feet. Rex was still inside the ship trying to pull any medical supplies out that he could. At the same time, he told the astromechs to find the closest medical facility. Ahsoka slid down next to Anakin, whose hand was buried into the pebbles. He was missing his other arm and two legs. What happened to him? Ahsoka gently put her hands on his shoulder and asked if he was alive. There wasn't anything verbally coherent, but he was alive. She gently and very carefully turned him over and almost fell backwards. This wasn't Anakin Skywalker. His eyes were painted yellow. There was so much darkness sitting within him, and he had to have done something terrible. He had to have... Ahsoka stopped. Anakin was motionless. Was it shame or disgust? There was a look she'd never seen in his eyes before. Her thoughts moved to what did he do? Ahsoka looked up at Rex, who was slipping over the pebbles, trying to bring a stretcher down the hill. He obviously didn't want to slip into the lava either. At this point, Rex wasn't even sure who this was. He was just trying to help. When he saw Ahsoka looking up at him, he was very confused but he steadily made his way down the hill. Ahsoka looked back down at Anakin, whose body was as limp as a lifeless corpse. He moved his head slightly, but not really vocalizing. There was so much rage and anger in his eyes, but under all of that was a terrible regret. Anakin struggled to move his arm. Was he trying to attack or get her attention? She placed her hand over his shoulder and pressed it down gently and shook her head. Ahsoka's heart rate picked up, and she couldn't help but feel shame for what had happened to Anakin. Once Rex got down to their level, he placed a medical capsule on the ground and put his hands under the crusted skin of Skywalker and picked him up and gently placed him down. Rex still didn't realize that this was Anakin, so he pressed a couple of buttons and the capsule lifted up and slowly drifted up the hill. Ahsoka didn't move. She stayed right where she was and looked at the ground and then back to the river. How did Anakin end up here? What happened to him in the last couple of days? She felt the ground and slowly got to her feet and walked up behind Rex. The astromechs found a location not far from Mustafar and they plugged in the coordinates. As they ascended, there was more darkness coming. Ahsoka closed her eyes as the ship left the atmosphere and she hadn't felt such an evil, vile being in her life, ever. Right as they were about to launch into hyperspace, the Chancellor's shuttle exited hyperspace. Rex noted it and he suggested they avoid it and get to the correct coordinates, so they did, jumping into hyperspace. Rex asked who that man was from the planet, and as the two of them entered the bay, Ahsoka told him that it was Anakin. There weren't words to describe the amount of shock on Rex's face when he heard that and he looked down at Anakin next to him. Skywalker wasn't awake, he was sedated. Once put into the ship, he was knocked out. Though for both Rex and Ahsoka, there was a genuine fear of him not making it to their destination. The heart monitors attached to him kept fluctuating. Little did they know that Anakin was connecting to Padme, who was giving birth at this very moment. Without Palpatine present, there was no one to steal Padme's life to replenish Anakin's. 
Anakin was feeling through the Force and picking up on the birth of his children. This was very similar to Anakin's feelings shared through the Force before he went to the Republic Executive Building where Mace and Sidious were fighting. Without Palpatine here, there was no interference for him. He was able to feel everything before he subconsciously disconnected. Because Anakin was sedated, all this was going on through his mind and his connection to the Force. It was taken away from him as he was ushered out of the vessel into the medical facility on Triton. It was Republic territory, but the chances of a garrison with Order 66 here were unlikely. The reason being is there were no Jedi stationed on Triton. There weren't even a lot of troops here anyways, but they didn't intend on getting anyone's attention while they were here, so it didn't matter. The two of them were able to get Anakin Skywalker into the medical facility. Instead of operating on his injured body, the medics would do something similar to a combined method. He'd be placed in the back to tank initially. Once everything leveled out, they'd begin working on building around his damaged limbs. They were attaching basic limbs that would naturally fit his body and would allow his body to mellow out some more. The extra limbs they had would allow his damaged body to release tension that existed in and around the missing limbs area. It was a medical trick that they learned centuries before, just something to make the healing process a bit more bearable. Skywalker wasn't awake and he was kept sedated, just so they could keep a closer look at all of his readings without him waking up or responding to anything. Ahsoka and Rex sat outside the room, looking in and speaking softly to each other. Rex and Ahsoka were asking each other what they thought happened to Anakin, and they couldn't come up with the slightest idea. They did also begin theorizing about why the Chancellor, or as they learned, Emperor was on the planet. But the reason he was there obviously didn't make them feel much better about why Anakin was there. Based off of what Maul said regarding the Dark Lord of the Sith, and, well, Rex's reaction to Order 66, perhaps the Chancellor was behind everything. This led to a wave of regret. With all the chaos going on, it just seemed like it wasn't that big of a deal, but now Rex felt a terrible regret for not having blown the ship out of the sky. Even if the Chancellor wasn't in the vessel, and even if he wasn't the Sith Lord, it was much better than allowing him have a grip over the galaxy without anyone to moderate him. Ahsoka told Rex not to blame himself for something out of his control. Even Ahsoka was struggling with that. She thought about what it would have meant for Anakin had she not gone to Mandalore, or even brought it up to the Jedi. Perhaps he would be alright. But also, the chances of it being completely out of her control were much more likely. Ahsoka had to accept that whatever happened to Anakin was likely his own doing. On another note, if it was an evil force that did it to him, if it could defeat him, then surely she would be dead if she was there, and no one would be able to save him from that lava river. Ahsoka believed everything happened the way it should have, and she expressed to Rex to not let it haunt him. It was over and done with. What is, is what they had to live with. Over a number of hours, Anakin would have a new set of legs and a new arm. These weren't similar in the gold tent to Anakin's other arm before it was burned, but they were all of the same brand, so they fit the same way and matched with each other. The medics even replaced the burned arm for Anakin as well. On Anakin's chest sat a breathing apparatus, and he was placed on a bed and left there to rest. The medics gave him some time outside the back to tank to allow his body to take in some air and get used to breathing with the breathing apparatus outside the back to tank. It wouldn't be much time, much more than 20 minutes at least, and then they would put him back in. Though it would give Ahsoka and Rex the opportunity to walk in and visit their friend. This may have been the worst thing for them to do. When they walked in, Anakin was looking at the ceiling. He didn't even look into the direction. The silence in the room was eerie, and through the force something felt so awry. Anakin twisted his head slowly to Ahsoka and Rex. There was so much anger on his face. He asked them why they were here, and they told him they saved him. He jolted up and told them that they should have been there to stop Obi-Wan from what he did to him. Anakin knew that he needed Ahsoka and Rex to be his allies. To simply proclaim he lost a fight wouldn't do the justice of saying what he was about to say. Skywalker told them that he used Padme to get to him, and then he tried to kill him, leaving Anakin at the bottom of the lava river to die. Ahsoka was in disbelief, begging the question, why would Obi-Wan do something like that? Anakin didn't hesitate. He insisted that Obi-Wan was jealous of him, and that the Jedi had tried to take over the Senate, Anakin suggesting that Mace Windu tried to kill Palpatine himself, and Anakin saved the Emperor. Obi-Wan was trying to get revenge for the death of Windu. There was a hint of madness in Anakin's eyes. It was hard to see through all the crust and the lack of eyebrows, but his eyes carried all the weight of his madness. Ahsoka looked to Rex and he gave her a look. They both knew this didn't sound like Obi-Wan or Mace Windu. Neither of them would do such a thing. It wasn't the Jedi way to do that. While they weren't close with Mace, and even Ahsoka had her reasons to dislike Windu, she didn't believe Anakin. When it came to Kenobi, that was a much different scenario. He wasn't the jealous type, and both Ahsoka and Rex could tell how much Obi-Wan loved Anakin, and even Rex could notion that Obi-Wan had nothing against him and Padme. There was never a hint of Kenobi using Padme for anything. 
It seemed so fabricated, and Anakin could see his audience slipping from him. He didn't appreciate that, and his arm lifted from the surface of the bed and he yelled out, demanding to know why they didn't believe him. Ahsoka was lifted into the air, her legs kicking aimlessly as she grasped for air. Anakin didn't stop. His face scrunched up, and the yellow tint in his eyes became all the more vibrant. It was a disgruntled look, and he was very ferocious looking. It terrified Ahsoka and Rex, but Rex had to react. He ran over and grabbed a little machine and pumped it with as much as he could. He jabbed it into Anakin's shoulder and released as much sedation as he could, and it did nothing. Anakin twisted his head and didn't loosen his grip on Ahsoka. He blasted his arm out with a force, throwing Rex through a wall. A bundle of medical droids entered the room and they sedated Anakin eventually. Ahsoka was knocked unconscious, and when she woke up, there was a medical droid pointing ointment on her neck. Rex was sitting next to her as he held a small pack above his head. It wasn't exactly pleasant having head trauma after head surgery. Regardless, Ahsoka was fuzzy and she asked what happened. Rex told her that the droid sedated Anakin and placed him back in the back to tank. A couple of them were destroyed but everyone was okay and that's all that mattered. The medical droid told Ahsoka to remain here and not to move. Rex then told Ahsoka that Anakin had been strapped down, but that likely wouldn't do much against him. The medical droids almost opted for removing his limbs for him, but Rex believed it would only make him angrier and it wouldn't also stop him from using the force. Rex then asked if that was right, still not entirely sure how the force worked or if it worked like that at all. Ahsoka nodded her head and began staring aimlessly out to the room. On Pulis Masa, Padme Amidala was making a decent recovery. She was still a little fuzzy after everything that happened on Mustafar, but with Obi-Wan and Yoda present, there was a sense of calmness for her. Though she expressed curiosity in Anakin's condition and where he was. Obi-Wan told her that he'd killed him on Mustafar. Padme was genuinely very upset. She didn't want that to happen to him, and she didn't want Anakin to suffer. Part of her understood, but the other part of her couldn't get over it. She was nearly inconsolable. Padme believed there was still good in Anakin. He wasn't a bad person or a bad man, but he seemingly made the wrong choices. Choices that cost the lives of those around him, especially those he slaughtered. With Yoda present, Padme saw the effects of Anakin's actions. Yoda wore so much pain on his face. After nearly 900 years of life, he hadn't encountered such loss. And as a Grand Master, the responsibility fell on him, and he held himself the most accountable for that great loss of life. Sidious, upon his return to Coruscant, would be enraged. He learned that Padme's vessel had escaped the planet. He also learned that another Naboo starship helped a Jedi Master escape the planet during the Purge. This collectively pissed him off. He would kill Padme, but that wasn't an available option, so her family would be targeted. A death squad would be sent to her family's home to make an example of them. No one would defy the Empire. There was only one way, and it was his way. Inside of the medical facility on Triton, Ahsoka was working on her voice again. She was struggling a lot with speaking. It was very difficult for her. Her throat was almost entirely crushed. She was able to squeak out a couple words and talk to Rex, though the medical droids discouraged her from speaking for the next couple of days. She didn't listen. She told Rex that she feared Anakin had fallen to the dark side, that he had done exactly what Maul predicted he'd do, and that Anakin was serving the Sith Lord. Rex asked her what she wanted to do about it, and she simply looked away. Rex suggested that maybe they could put him down. It could be the easiest way forward for Anakin. Ahsoka shook her head. The notion of doing that welted a tear in her eye. She looked over to Rex and said that she believed that her master was somewhere inside of him, but that much was unknown at this point. She got up and walked over to the window and looked across at the back to tank. Anakin was floating lifelessly inside of it. A creased brow sat over his eyes and fury radiated from his very essence, even though he was sedated. Ahsoka looked over to Rex and frowned. Maybe it was the best way forward. As his friend, sister, and apprentice, was it the right decision to make? Ahsoka stepped back and sat down and suggested they find Obi-Wan before they made any decisions. Was it even possible to find him? Obi-Wan, Yoda, and Padme arrived at her residence on the countryside of Naboo. It was engulfed in flames. Padme didn't want the children to be split up, and she didn't want either Jedi going into exile. If Anakin was indeed dead, then it was their duty to restore the balance. So much had been done to destroy the balance, they had to ensure it was restored. But when they arrived, they were filled with horror. What had happened to her family's home? It was in ruins. The Empire had been here, and it destroyed everything Padme had left. The sights of her family members burning were an icy cold reminder to Obi-Wan of what he left his former student to die in. Rex and Ahsoka figured they might as well try Padme's transponder again. It seemed as if they were on Naboo. In reality, they had forgotten about it due to the sheer trauma and craziness that developed around them. Rex used a frequency he had access to thanks to Anakin and tried contacting the vessel. The message was intercepted by C-3PO. He was very confused, but joyful in his response to asking who this was. And then he turned over to R2 and asked if he knew a Captain Rex. R2 knew who it was and moved out of the ship. 3PO continued up a conversation with his new friend, Captain Rex, and he already knew who Ahsoka was. 
It didn't take long for Obun to be back in the ship looking for Ahsoka. When he came into the command deck, he saw Ahsoka and Rex on the hologram and his heart jumped with joy, though he was confused as to how Ahsoka and Rex were with each other. He learned of where they were, and in a few short moments, he learned the truth of what had happened. While Ahsoka and Rex before the Purge were closer with Anakin, they still told Obi-Wan everything. They didn't believe what Anakin said, and his outright hostility dissuaded them from even trying to see his point of view. Kenobi told them that they would make their way for Triton immediately. When Padme returned to the vessel, already crushed by the death of her entire family and losing all the memories she shared with them inside the destruction of their home, she learned of Anakin's survival. It hurt to know that he survived what he had endured. Then she learned of how he tried to kill Ahsoka. They collectively picked up and made their way for Triton. They would arrive before Anakin woke up, but he was constantly being put under waves of sedation anyways. They had decided it would be best to remove all the limbs too. Anakin was simply sitting in the back to tank without any arms or legs, a husk of human flesh aimlessly floating. Padme, when she came in, initially hugged Ahsoka, before making her way over to the back to tank. Obi-Wan came in and hugged Ahsoka and Rex too. His joy to see them couldn't be overstated. Then he caught a glimpse of the destroyed body of Anakin Skywalker. Yoda was the last into the room, and expressed contentment with seeing Ahsoka alright. Padme was so shocked, seeing what had happened to Anakin was terrifying. He was burnt to a crisp, and that angry look sat over his eyes even though he was sleeping. She then remembered through a flash of memories how she ended up in a hospital on Polis Masa. She hadn't remembered him choking her or trying to kill her, and now she did. Obi-Wan looked into the glass and his heart bore the weight of what he had left Anakin for. He was angry at himself for leaving Anakin to lay in such a painful state of existence. Yoda was the last to come around and look into the back to tank, and his horror was greater than what beset Obi-Wan or Padme. Yoda hadn't ever seen a student fall so far, and he too bore the responsibility of what happened to Skywalker. No one said anything. They just quietly looked into the back to tank and watched in horror and sadness. Ahsoka and Rex stood side by side, trying to figure out what would come from this and what would happen. Silence filled the air for minutes, and then Anakin was taken out of the back to tank. They hooked up his respirator to him and lay him down on the bed. It was weird looking at him. His skin was clearing up a little bit, but it was still very badly damaged. His eyes fluttered open a little. His arm moved up like he was trying to rub his eyes. The phantom limb. And then he realized that he had none of them, and his eyes shot open. It seemed that between his attack on Ahsoka and now, he'd gone into a surreal place of existence where he never lost any of his limbs. A wave of terror covered his face and his body before he looked up and saw Obi-Wan, Padme, Ahsoka, Rex, and Yoda hovering around him. First, he felt anger. When he saw Obi-Wan, he felt a sense of fear. With Yoda, it was rage. With Padme, it was love and confusion. He didn't understand anything and so he began yelling at them. Spit escaped his mouth and the ferocity of his dialect. He was so beyond upset that he tried to verbalize every feeling he was feeling and all that came out was a misconstrued mess of unrecognizable words. The worry on Padme's face vanished into an upset look of disappointment. Anakin caught a glimpse of it and he slipped out of his tirade and she asked why he did it. Anakin twisted his body aggressively and he said he did it to save her. She looked at him and asked what from. Anakin looked around and took note that she was alright, but then he said he was trying to save her from childbirth. Padme's anger grew. The only thing that hurt her during childbirth was him. If it wasn't for Obi-Wan, Anakin may have killed her. Of course he wouldn't, but there was no way for Padme to know that Anakin was set off by Obi-Wan's appearance, but his anger was already growing before Obi-Wan even showed up at the top of the ramp. Padme was upset because she gave a healthy birth to two children, and the cost of that was Anakin trying to kill her, presumably, the death of thousands of Jedi, the rise of the Emperor and his best friend had to almost kill him. Padme was terribly upset because of all the emotional distress Anakin put her through, rather than simply being there for her. His actions were the cause of this. Anakin's rage and anger subsided. He looked with sorrow in his eyes and he tried to proclaim an apology, but she didn't want to hear it. He apologized after nearly beating Clovis' death, after he forced himself onto her, and yet his actions didn't change. He clearly couldn't analyze the situation before reacting with some sort of violence. And an apology is worth nothing without change. How could she trust someone who could very easily kill children with her children? Anakin was left in silence. No one said a word, especially as Ahsoka and Rex played catch-up, realizing that there were now children involved between the two of them. Padme stormed off, and Anakin sat with everything just said to him for a moment. If anyone could bring him down from the high he was in, it was Padme, and for the first time since Mustafar, he felt regret. Had he done all of this for Padme, or was he throwing everything away to make a Sith dream come true? No one said a word, and the truth slowly crept over Anakin. He began to learn that his actions were not for Padme's benefit, but for Palpatine. It all clicked, and it made him feel so terrible. Over the coming weeks, there would be continuous spells of anger and rage. 
but instead of leaving the facilities, he'd be kept here. And once Anakin was free, they would leave and take him out of the facility with his new limbs. At this point, he and Padme were actually talking again after not speaking to each other for the first week after the reunion. At this time, Ahsoka and Rex have been constructing a plan to take down the Emperor, and the irony is, it would use the same technology that threw Ahsoka from the Order. Rex knew a supplier of the nanotechnology used to blow up the hangar bay of the Jedi Temple. Obi-Wan and Yoda were unaware of it, however, they left the medical facilities before anyone else did. With Luke and Leia protected by Ahsoka and Rex, and Anakin showing no aggressive tendencies towards his children, they went out to collect surviving Jedi. While Padme and Anakin were on rough terms, still, Anakin wanted to join Rex and Ahsoka on their little mission to destroy the Emperor's office. Padme and the children instead went to Alderaan to join up with Brea and Bail Organa to stay safe and hidden for the time being. This would be very beneficial for Padme, because they'd be able to help her understand her own concerns regarding Anakin. While Rex and Ahsoka had some great talking points, Padme wanted some more opinions regarding the situation. Anakin may have been following orders, but what he did was unforgivable. There were less than 105 Jedi left in the galaxy. That's from an order of what used to be 10,000. Padme couldn't get rid of the disgust she felt every time she looked at Anakin. He could feel it, and it ate him up from the inside out. But because he was constantly having to live with it, rather than run away from it, he had to accept it. He also had to accept that it happened because of him just like the terrific burn scars he had across his body. But before he left, he also did some extra work on himself to cover up some of the trauma to his skin, aside from the obvious new limbs he had. Rex's contact was in the lower levels of Coruscant, and after a number of days of Ahsoka spying on the Emperor, and Skywalker and Rex getting the supplies, they were prepared. Anakin at this state still didn't have a lightsaber, and wasn't even used to standing, let alone fighting with all his new limbs. Plus he at this point without all the damage wasn't a match for Sidious, neither was Ahsoka. It would be much better to set up a trap for him. He wouldn't expect it. The galaxy had shown no hesitancy to jump on with the Palpatine bandwagon, mostly because of his blame of the Jedi for everything that happened. But Ahsoka with R2 and her own astromech, R7, were able to find security recordings of the fight between Sidious and Yoda. It would be a great way to publicly display the great lie. That is, of course, after they killed Palpatine. It would take weeks to nail this, because they didn't want to screw it up. During this time, Obi-Wan and Yoda found a couple of younglings and Padawans out and about in the galaxy. This included Reva, Cal Kestis, Nari, and Caleb Doom. They also found Jedi Masters Quinlan Voss, Terra Sanube, Jocasta Nu, and Coleman Cash. There was a chance, after all, for their order to survive. Padme, on the other hand, had figured out her decision, at least for the time being regarding Anakin. With the bombs laid, the trap was sprung on an unsuspecting Palpatine. An explosion ripped apart the Emperor's office and ripped him into pieces. Skywalker was determined to make sure Palpatine died, so the three of them scurried in through the smoke to find Sidious laying on the ground, alive. He wasn't exactly thrilled to be blown to pieces, but he also wasn't very thrilled to see Skywalker, Tano, and Rex. Anakin told the other two that he was going to keep Sidious and torture him until he died. A slow and painful death. Ahsoka responded immediately. Anakin, that's not the Jedi way. I'm no Jedi. Neither am I. The echo of the blaster rang out through the room. Ahsoka and Anakin looked over and were shocked to say the least. They didn't expect that from Rex, but he did it anyways. The trio quickly escaped into the night. Why would Rex feel so inclined to do that? Because all of his brothers were killed for nothing. A proxy war to set Palpatine up for power, and the thought of it disgusted Rex. He couldn't live with someone like that existing in the galaxy. Also, Rex liked the Jedi, so it was kind of a no-brainer for him to just kill Palpatine for killing all the Jedi. The three of them would return to Alderaan, and watch the chaos unfold from a distance. Bail Organa saw this as an opportunity and seized it. He knew he didn't believe in what he was about to do, but in reality, what he was about to do could save the Republic. With the help of his allies, Bail would take complete control over the seat of Emperor for himself. Padme, who was now having Ahsoka look after the children, with select visits from Anakin, would join Bail and Mon in the Senate. Emperor Organa would simply use his power to undo everything Palpatine did. He simply took all the power that existed in the role of Emperor and made everything the way it should be. He got rid of everything that made Palpatine have so much power to begin with, and he dumbed down the Galactic Senate and reformed it back into a Republic, handing more control over to the Senators and removing all influence from the corporate powers. Through this, he ensured that the Republic was completely operated by Senators with no outside influence. Padme would move back into her home on Coruscant and divorce Anakin. She expressed that she forgave him, but she did not want to spend her life with him. Padme never looked at Anakin the same after she really registered what he had done. Did she love him? Yes. Did she believe there was still good in him? Yes. But would she stay with him? No. It was for her own good. This didn't mean the end of Luke and Leia seeing Anakin. They still saw each other, especially as Anakin continued to work on himself as an individual. The Jedi, on the other hand, didn't seek revenge. But there was a genuine disgust and disliking of Anakin for most of the survivors, as they vanished from the public eye. Maul's little criminal empire would have its day in the sun until it would be stomped out by the Republic, causing Maul to go in hiding. 
Without any apprentices, the line of the Sith would come to an end when Maul passed away from natural causes. Ahsoka would go her own route, continuing her journey in the Force in an attempt to grow her knowledge in the Force and knowledge about herself, and who she wanted to become. Rex would become quite a politician, and while he wasn't actually really a politician, he became a voice for all the clones who lost so much through a war that was all for nothing. It was a hard thing to get over. Anakin, on the other hand, would be there for Luke and Leia, never missing an important moment in either of their lives. But he would begin his journey into the Force too. After losing so much, he wanted to make sure it never happened again, and while the tragedy of his life seemed so depressing, he found happiness in what he had left. He wasn't evil, he wasn't a slave to the Sith, he was Anakin Skywalker, a free man. Sure, he didn't have Padme in his life anymore, and that kind of sucked, but he came to terms with it. He learned to be okay with letting go, and accepting that not everything is meant to last forever. His love for Padme never left, but he understood why she chose the path she chose. He still had Luke and Leia, so there was no reason to worry about it. Over the years, Anakin and Obi-Wan would reconcile, and also move on with their lives. Anakin would be proud to see how far Obi-Wan had come through all of his loss, and also see his new responsibility at the top of the Jedi Council next to Yoda. Obi-Wan, on the other hand, would be very proud of Anakin's development as well. And while many would see Anakin as someone who lost it all, he saw himself as someone who escaped the clutches of death. Because when he learned of how close Palpatine was to finding him on Mustafar, he couldn't be more grateful for the galaxy he found himself in. One that may have been fractured, but it wasn't one under the manipulation and control of the Sith, and it was a galaxy booming with hope for a future that sat before it. And that, my friends, is our story. Again, special thanks to Galvin Gaming, Tristan, Darth Revan, Pimp Daddy Bane, The Last Jedi, Apollo, The Eternal Padawan, Jedi Sloth, Mr. Yeet Gamer, Mad Madness Studios, Anakin003, Lemon Knight, Rex the Wolf, The Man with Three First Names, Dark Saint 46, Baron Joshua, and Lord Deadwing for supporting the channel. Smash the like button if you want to support me in other ways. Go check out the Patreon, the link is down below. Also special thanks to Raid for sponsoring this video. Otherwise, let's talk about our story. The main thing that's going to be brought up is probably the relationship between Anakin and Padme at the end of the story. And I really based it off of what Padme says in her death, but I also took it for a little twist. Uh, Padme says that she believes there's good in him, that she believes he's a good person at the end of her at the end of her story in Revenge of the Sith. And I'm ta I took that forward, but I also took it forward with the, with the intelligence, the emotional intelligence he has as a character, which is... I might still believe there's good in him, I might still love him, but I know what's best for me, and what's best for me isn't being with him. And I believe that is what Padme would do. I think this story is more so an overall redemption arc for everyone, like, like everyone gets a redemption. The clones get the redemption, the Jedi get the redemption, Anakin gets a redemption, Padme gets a redemption, Ahsoka gets a redemption. You know, all these characters get their redemption, and that's kind of the point of the story. Everyone kind of gets their redemption, and they also get their, their chance to move forward. They get the chance to... to to actually grow beyond what they lost at the end of Revenge of the Sith. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed. I love you all, spread the love, and always remember my friends, may the Force be with you.